Last week I produced part two of a series of videos that talked about the great yacht builders that exist in the United States of America. The comment section of my videos has never been so lively as many of you commented on other yacht builders that I should have included. Some of those comments spoke about builders that are really very small, others about builders of really very small boats. So I decided to produce a part three to the series to cover the ones that got away. Jack Derry commented on the first video saying, you cannot do a video on American yachts without talking about Hinkley. They are iconic and beautiful boats built in Maine. Iconic is right, Jack, and Hinkley are the main reason that I decided to do this third and final video of the series. Their instantly recognizable picnic boats run from the 35 knot, 32 foot, released just last year, through to their Mark 337. And on to the largest in the range, the 40. Each one has jet drives for impressive performance and each one has jet stick controls for ease of use. Hinkley picnic boats at the end of the day are all about getting out on the water, having fun and having a picnic. But whilst the 90 year history of Hinkley is rooted in the past, they're certainly looking to the future and have just come out with an electric 28 foot boat called the Dasher. It runs on BMW i3 lithium ion batteries, can travel 40 miles at 10 miles an hour. And if you put your foot down, you can reach speeds of 27 miles an hour. I'd have to respectfully disagree with Hinkley's claim that this boat qualifies as a luxury yacht but I do greatly admire their investment in electric propulsion since this is such an interesting field in yacht development. Let's not forget though that Hinkley have also launched some of the most attractive, charming and seaworthy sailboats on the ocean and still have a very desirable product range of two beautiful yachts, namely the Day Sailor 42 that can accommodate up to eight passengers and be sailed single-handed and the racy looking Bermuda 50 that's a performance sloop. Add Hinkley's range of runabouts and the oddly named Talarius that are actually the larger version of their picnic boats to the mix and you have an iconic American company that has stayed true to its values and heritage and appear to have prospered doing it so well. Talking about historic brands with heritage though, let's talk about Chris Craft, as suggested by NoMind3R and backed up by David Blaylock. And David, thanks by the way for being such a regular viewer. Chris Craft have been building boats for 142 years and were being sold in Europe long, long before the European boats were finding success in the United States. I could get lost in reading their history, but this video is about what they're doing now. They have a range that runs from the retro styled 21 foot Capri 21 up to the 44 foot Commander that can sleep five people on board. My personal favorite was the Corsair 34 though. The Corsair range includes a 27 foot, a 30 foot and this the 34 foot that has its own head, sleeping area and a galley large enough to cook Italian Spiadini di Calamari and Gambari that you can eat as you laze on the chaise long in the cockpit. Some of the Chris Craft range such as the Carina series and the launch series include a bow seating area too but then of course you lose any real cabin space so it all depends how you want to use your boat as to which one to choose. I can't help feeling that this is a possession that you won't refer to as your boat, you'll refer to it as your Chris Craft. The final builder on this video about the ones that got away is prompted by a comment on the community section of my YouTube channel. If you haven't seen this yet, it's a tab on the home page of the channel that allows me to post comments and photos and get feedback from you. Exclamation mark Am Lelnadot said, there are much more yacht builders that deserve to be mentioned in one of your videos. Personally, I like the small designs of the Brooklyn Boatyard. In fact, exclamation mark Am Lelnadot was quite insistent, posting this comment twice. And this really intrigued me, so I took a look at the Brooklyn Boatyard website and even emailed them for more information. 
because they are a fascinating and to me previously unknown boutique custom builder. Just look at this magnificent 74 foot Herman Frey's design day sailor called Foggy. It's absolutely unique and I can imagine it must be the pride and joy of its owner. The interiors are like nothing I have ever seen before. That unusual lattice effect that you can see from the outside is not just for styling, it brings light into the yacht in a very effective and attractive manner. If the owner of Foggy happens to watch this video and ever wants to sell her, please do get in contact with me. Other wonderful examples of the work that Brooklyn Boatyard has done include the charming 49-foot cruiser Blackfish, the splendid 43-foot racing sloop Racehorse, and the in-house designed 26-foot jet launch Duck Soup, although I am a little worried to ask what that floral wreath is all about on the bow. Your comments on that below, please. This builder offers a selection of small motor cruisers and custom sailboats, and I would love to visit them and have a look around the next time I'm in that part of the world. I have to admit that I go to the United States every time an opportunity presents itself. I love the place. I love the spirit of entrepreneurship that's so prevalent over there. One thing I would say though, having spent a lot of time in the States and having also tried unsuccessfully to sell the presidential yacht of Harry Truman, is that you guys don't always appreciate what a great history that you have. It seems to me that every American is happy to say that they're 2% German, 30% Irish, three quarters Swedish, as if having a foreign history is some way a good thing, when actually you have an incredible history all to yourselves in America. Sure, there are th some things that you're less proud of than others, but your yacht building history is really rich. Doing the research for this video was absolutely fascinating, especially Chris Craft, and I came out of it thinking that I really should make an offer of American yachts to clients far more often than I currently do. About what I do do for my clients, next week's video will be talking about just what it is that a yacht broker does all day, or more specifically, what I do for my clients who are looking to buy and to sell yachts. I probably get about a message once a week from people who'd like to become a yacht broker, so next week's video shows just what goes on behind the closed doors of a yacht brokerage.